Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at how granularity affects the computation of averages with DAX. Now, it's a common scenario where in the business you're trying to, you know, compute whatever metric it is or understand a particular metric and for that metric you want to compute the average. So let's say for example, you want to compute what's the average sale, what's the average customer. Uh, average number of customers, average number of transactions. But the thing with averages is there is always a denominator that determines what level that average is being computed. And that's exactly what we mean by granularity in this case. So we're talking about granularity, we're referring to what's the level of detail that is required for your calculation. So Looking at the table we have here, what we have here is what we can see the year, right? 2021 down through to 2025. When we talk about granularity, the granularity of this table is at the level of the year, right? So the year is the lowest level of detail that we have in this table. Let's look at the second one. Here we have quarter. So 2021 Q1, 2021 Q2. Here the granularity is what? The quarter. And then you can roll up to the year here we have the month the granularity again here is the month so the lowest level of detail is the month which you can now roll up to the quarter and then roll up to the year and in this case the granularity here is the date so granularity basically refers to the level of detail now let's see how that affects um, calculations when you're trying to do an average with DAX let's look at the model that we have here so we have a very simple data model um, just a single star schema here with an order stable and we have a customer product date and location dimensions and if we look at the content of the order stable what we have here is a single item for every transaction within an order so this order ID was done on this date shipped on this date there's a ship mode there's the customer and that's the product that they bought and a couple of information about whether or not the return and what the value of that transaction was so in here if i sort the ids you see that we can have multiple transactions on a single order so multiple items may have been bought by that customer or within that order now if you look at this table what's the level of granularity in this table here the level of granularity is what the single order line item or you say the single transaction right so each item in this table is a transaction not a an order right it's a transaction or an order line item but we can roll up down to the level of the order or to the level of the day the month and so on so we have this in mind that is the model that we're working with let's now try to do a copy of a couple of calculations so i've created some calculations in advance just computing a couple of averages or a couple of totals right so total sales total transactions total profit total quantity sold and now we want to understand what's the average quantity sold and the first thing you do is to just come in here and create a new measure say so right click new measure and say we want to do the average zoom in on that okay so average quantity sold and we'd say we take the average of the quantity column from the other stable and we have that now let's add this to one of the visuals we have here let's look at our year and just put in the average quantity sold in this visual here so now what's this telling us? So an average in 2021, we have an average of 3.8 units sold. 2022, 3.8, 2024, 3.7. Now, what does this average mean? Is it the average quantity sold on an order? Is it the average quantity sold in a day? Is it the average quantity sold in the month? Is it the average quantity sold in the quarter, in the hour? What's the denominator? What's the granularity of this calculation? In this case, how, all we just did with this calculation is just reference the orders table and 
quantity column. Now I just showed us what's the granularity of the order table. The order table is at the level of the line item, the level of the transaction. So what this basically means is every transaction on average there was a purchase of 3.8 units in 2021 and in 2024 there was a purchase of 3.77 units. So it's not about the order now, it's about what the transaction itself. So the specific line item was on average three units or three quantities that were sold. But what that's, that's not what we're interested in. Let's say what we're interested in to see, okay, for each order, right, how many quantities on average is bought. So I'm going to take order one, compute what's the number of quantities that was bought on that order, take order two, compute the number of quantities, take order three, four, five, as many orders as we have, and then compute the average over that um, result. So in that case, we are shifting the granularity from the transaction level to the order level. So for each order, we want to understand what the average quantity sold is. Now, let's create a new measure just so we can compare. And I'll say new measure, we'll just call this measure our uh, average quantity, quantity sold per order. So shift enter to come into a new line, average quantity sold per order. Now, how can we control the granularity of a calculation? Now, just as we have functions like the average, the sum, the main, the max, we have a specific, a, another set of functions that are replicas of this, but they have an X um, at the end of it. So just like we have the average, we have the average X. Now, these functions are what are called iterator functions, right? So the average X is an iterator function. And what the average X does is it computes a calculation, right, at a specific level of detail. Or you can say it as it computes the average after something has been done. So now, let me see if I can bring up the screen tip for the average. Okay, let's see. So it says calculate the average arithmetic mean of a set of expressions evaluated over a table. Calculate the arithmetic mean, that's the average, of a set of expressions evaluated over a table. So the first argument of the average x function is that table. Right? It's the table. Now, a table in this case is just basically used to define that level of granularity. So we don't want to compute our calculation at the transaction level, we want to compute it at the order level. So we need to give average x a table that has for each row of that table a single order. That's basically what we need to do. So how we can achieve that is to use a function called values. Now values is a function that returns, as you can see, values is when a column name is given, it returns a single column table of unique values. When the table name is given, it returns a table with the same column. So if we give values a column, it's going to return a single column table of unique values. So when I say values and I pick the other ID, what values is going to do, so order ID from the orders table, no, not that. So orders, order ID. What values is going to do is going to create a table within my calculation. And that table is going to contain a single column called order ID. But it's going to contain only unique values of order. So each row in that table is a single order ID. I have now defined the granularity of my calculation. So that's the first part of the average x function. Second part of the function is what the expression. So for each row of this table, what is it that you want me to aggregate before computing the average? Right? So these average x, some x functions, these x functions, what they do is first you give them a table that determines the granularity of the calculation. Then you give them an expression 
which is basically a computation or something that they need to do first before actually doing what they're expected to do. So we want to compute the average, but the average of what? What's the expression that you want to compute the average of? So I'm just going to give this the expression now. As I've given it the table, which is the order ID unique list, and our expression, since we have a measure called quantity sold, I'm just going to give it our total quantity sold. I'll close the bracket here. So what is this going to do? It's going to say, okay, for each row, right, for each order ID, I'm going to aggregate what the quantity sold are and then compute my average over that result. So each order ID, quantity sold, and then you compute the average over that result. Now, if I hit enter, let's just add that to this visual here. So we have our average quantity sold per order. Add that to the visual and just shrink this a bit so you can see it all in one view. Okay. So now we'll look at the difference between our calculations now. So in 2021, a single transaction is usually about 3.84 units sold, but a single order will typically have what? 7.8 or about 9 units sold. Now let's say quantity sold is not particularly interesting. What could be interesting is um, you know, sales values, right? So what's the average sales value on a specific order? The beauty about this is this is a pattern that is reusable. So I'm going to copy this and I'll just create a new measure that we're going to call our average, let's call it average order value. So I just pasted that in the and I'll call this average order value. That is for each order on average was the sales value. Now, instead of everything else remains the same, the only thing that's going to change is instead of referencing my measure of total quantity sold, I'm going to reference my measure of total sales. Now, what this is going to compute for me is on average, what is the average order value? Just format this currency to the small places. And this is the average order value. So there you have it, how granularity affects your calculation.